wonder what's holding us up. Fred, what seems to be the trouble? I don't know, Mr. Blair. Some kind of a tire. This is terrible. Oh, don't get excited, darling. It won't help matters. The train's due at 10.40, and at 10.30 now, we'll never make it. Well, perhaps the train will be late. Don't be so optimistic. Trains are only late when people are on time. I wired Richard Williams I'd surely meet him. A nice reception for a visitor coming all the way from the south. Now, don't worry, darling. He has our address. Surely he'll have sense enough to take the train to Hartstein. What on earth is holding us up? of the Fresh Air Taxi Cab Company, I'm telling you to get behind this thing and push it out of here. I ain't going to do it. Let me at that thing. I'll fix it. <laughs> Amos, look out. First thing you know, a policeman going to come up here and rest both of them. Don't you worry about a policeman. You get this thing fixed and get out of here. I'll take care of the police. Uh-oh. Amos, I told you police would come up here and rest if you don't get out of here now. Who wants this chair? Are we a partner, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes, He is the president. I is not. You is now. I don't care anything about that. Get this thing out of here. I'll run your post there. Yes, Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at me do it fast as we can. I was ready. Go ahead, Amos. Go ahead. Stand and look under the front seat and hand me a monkey wrench, will you? Stand it. Amos, what is you doing? Come on, get this thing started. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. again, Ralph, but I broke my saddle since doing it. Well, even so, I think I should have the kiss anyway. Oh, no. A bet's a bet, Ralph. Jane, I was going to speak to your mother this morning. What about? Something about you. Something important? Important to me. And to you, I hope. When I got to the house, she was gone. Oh, yes. Mother and Dad went to the Pennsylvania station to meet a friend arriving from the south. I wonder what he'll be like for all these years. No. Now, he. Oh, yes. Richard Williams. We were kids together back in Georgia. Really? Rich and handsome, I suppose. Mm, I don't remember what he looks like. But he's not rich. Not anymore. His father's death left the family in difficulty. Too bad. <laughs> His dad and my dad were great friends. That's why he's coming north. Oh, to see your father. I heard dad say he was coming to trace some property in New York. No, I feel rather sorry for him. I wish you'd feel rather sorry for me. Why? What's the matter with you? You know what's the matter with me. Jean... I love you. There isn't anything in the world I wouldn't do for you. Will you do something for me right now? Anything. Ride up to the stable and get me a new cinch for my saddle. Is that all? Well, that's a lot. Or else one of us will have to walk home. All right. Now, 
will you do something for me? What? Think about marrying me. And when I come back, give me your answer. Sorry my taxi caused you so much trouble, but I don't think you ought to take it out on the horse. Well, you don't, huh? Well, just what business is it of yours? None, I suppose, but you'll get more out of him if you're gentle with him. When I need your advice, I'll let you know. Still, you stubborn thief. I wouldn't do that again if I were you. Oh, well, no. Well, just what would you do? Trouble? Nothing, Jean. This young Don Quixote is just giving me a lesson in horsemanship. I beg your pardon. Did, did I hear this gentleman call you Jean? Yes. You're not Jean Blair. Yes. Why, well, I'm Richard Williams. Why, Richard, I'm so glad to see you. Why, this is the boy I've been telling you about. Richard, I want you to meet Mr. Crawford. How do you do? Didn't Dad and Mother meet you at the station? No. Uh, I figured they were held up in traffic, so I took the first train up here. Well, I'm certainly glad you got here. Is this your first trip north? Why, no. I spent eight years in school up here. And you never even looked me up. Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't know where to find you until recently. Oh, Jean, don't you think we ought to finish our ride? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll run up the house. Oh, perhaps I'd better ride up with you, if you don't mind. Not at all, but... I don't think there'd be enough room in the cab for the horse. Oh, Ralph, you understand, don't you? Why, of course. And you won't mind leading my horse home? It's a pleasure. <laughs> Come on, Richard. Get away from that phone. This is the Fresh Air Taxi Cab Company of America Incorporated. Andrew Brown speaking. Oh, hello. It's Madam Queen. Boys, he said he's after you, eh? What's that, honey? No, I can't right now. The kingfish is coming over to talk over a big proposition. Well, I'll call you back. Oh, show, show. You know, me and you was going to a big dance tonight after the meeting. Well, that's sweet. Ducky Wucky loves you, too. Oh, Ducky Wucky. What's that? She is, huh? Ruby Taylor is over at Madam Queen's duty shop right now, Amos. What's he doing over there? What's that? Well, hold the phone a minute, honey. The madam wants the four of us to go to a big dance tonight after the meeting. Well, wait a minute. Let me talk to Ruby first. Hello, honey. 
You sound good to me. Well, I'll call you back. Wait a minute. Let me talk to Ruby. Hello. Hello. Uh, wait a minute. Amos wants to talk to Ruby. All right, sweet. Goodbye, sweet dog. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, Ruby. Uh, this here is Amos. The boy with the egg-shaped head. The boy with the egg-shaped head. I mean, uh, wait a minute. Will you handle it? Uh, hello, honey. Uh, Andy just told me about the, the, uh, the dance tonight. Oh, I ain't gonna dance with nobody but you. Oh, I like to dance. With a gal with big feet. With a gal with big feet. I mean, uh, uh, wait a minute, honey. Andy, please let me alone, will you? Well, excuse me, honey. Andy got me messed up that time. Well, listen. Will you shut up? Will you shut up? I mean, uh, uh, uh hold the phone just a second, honey. And the please, when the lone will you're getting me all mixed up. Seven million. Eight million. Ten million. Uh, uh, hello, honey. Uh, hello. Uh, excuse me, Andy got me messed up that time. Well, listen. You big fat head. You big fat head. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hold the phone a minute, honey. Hold the phone. And the please, when the lone will you. Well, Amos, remember that that is a business telephone. I know, Andy, but don't holler at me all the time. Uh, hello, honey. Well, listen, sweetheart. No, no, I got plenty of time. No, no, take your time. Hurry up. Hurry up. I mean, uh, uh, wait up a minute, honey. Andy, all you was doing is getting me mi 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 mixed up. That's all you're doing. Hello, Andy. Shut up, Ruby. I mean, uh, uh, uh hello, Ruby. Uh, listen, honey. Uh, well, let's count on going to the dance right after we get out to meeting at the Lord's Hall tonight. All right, honey. All right. Goodbye. Well, Andy, that sounds pretty good, don't it? Boy, I got to go out and get me some clothes, you know it? Amos, how much money have you got? Listen, Andy, why don't you forget about buying clothes or anything else? You know we ain't got no money. We ain't no better off right this minute than we was when we worked for Mr. Williams down in Georgia. Listen, Amos, I said I had to go out and get some clothes. Now, I know what I need. You just keep that big mouth of yours shut. Ever since you've been up here in New York, all you've been doing is putting on the dog. Sometime I wish I was back down in Georgia. I think about it all the time. Mr. Williams was good to us. And I'm going to write him a letter, too, and let him know that we're thinking about it. Boy, he's a friend that is a friend. Wait a minute. Here come the kingfish. Well, hello there, kingfish. Hello Come there, in. Kingfish. How are you? Hello, boys. How is you? Glad to see you. Come on yeah. in, kingfish. Oh, well, boys, I got to call on you now and then because we's all brothers in that great fraternity, the Mystic Knights of the Sea. Yeah, that's right, King. Yeah, we is brothers, ain't we, King C? Boys, uh, I got an idea that I think we can work out to our mutual revenge. Well, uh, what is the proposition? Uh huh. Well, now, brothers, I just want to lay my cards on the table. Well, we ain't got no table. I moved the typewriter and you put them right on the desk. Hey, Amos, hey, what are you doing? Now, keep out of it. All right. Well, I got a chance, boys, for you to make some money. Uh -huh. That is, knowing that you is the businessman that you is. Uh -huh. Oh, show, show. Uh, what is it, King C? A friend of mine has an orchestra that's got a job tonight up at Hartsey. Uh -huh. That's in Westchester County. And I can get the job for you boys to drive the orchestra up there in the fresh air taxi cab. Uh -huh. yeah, sounds good. Yeah, sounds we're good. looking for business, Casey. At 7 o'clock tonight, you fix up the orchestra in front of the Treble Cleft Club. And you take them up to Hartsdale to Mr. Blair's house. Uh -huh. I got all the directions here on this paper. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. Well, the kingfish, do we have to bring them back? Yeah, how about getting them back, kingfish? No, no, no. They'll get back. You just take them up there and leave. Uh -huh. And you boys don't forget, you must be back in time for the meeting at the lodge tonight. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is right. Yeah, yeah ha, 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 ha. How much do you get for taking the orchestra up there? Well, now, uh, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to talk over with you. You see, the orchestra had other rings. Uh -huh. But 
I told him that I wanted you boys to drive him up there. Yeah. Uh, you see, he was me and his brothers in the lot. Uh, well, uh, how much do we get, Kingfish? Well, uh, figuring the mileage plus the time, uh, I told him uh, it'd be $12. $12? Check. Now, I'm figuring, of course, that you boys is going to give me the customer's commission for getting you the job. The, the customer's what? The customer's commission. That is, in other words, uh, monetary rejuvenation. Uh, monetary, uh, monetary rejuvenation, Abel. Oh. What you mean, oh? Just plain oh. I just said oh. Well, Kingfish, if you get the remission, how much do you get? Well, I worked on the usual scale of 10%. Uh, 10%? Uh, how much is that, Kingfish? Well, uh, now let's figure that out. Yeah, who, who, who's got a pencil? I got a little piece of one here. This is a disregrace to the press. Well, that's more than you got. Ten percent. Now, uh, ten percent is, uh, ten percent is, uh, well, ten is ten. Anybody knows that? That's right, Brother Andy. That's right. Now, ten percent. Now, right here, we're going to have to do some revising and some uh, reducer. And looks like we're going to have to time this thing, too. Now, 10 goes in the 12. 10 goes in. 10 goes in the 12. Well, get it in there. Will you shut your big mouth? All right. Then goes in the twelve. Uh, Brother Andy, you doing that the old way. Let's do that the new way. To do it anyway, Kingfish, so as I can tell you, he ain't never gonna get in there. That's a result of the present. Right. Now, uh, the new way you talk about. Yes, sir. Well, how you do it the new way? Well, now, uh, you boys just wait a minute. Yeah, show me that. I'll I want to see the that new too. Way. <laughs> now, you take that ten. And you uh, multiply it by two. Don't forget there are three of us. Amen. All right. Now, anybody know that two tens is 20? Oh, yeah, sure. Anybody knows that, yeah. Now, you take that 12 and you duck it from the 20, and that leave eight. Eight, yeah. And, brothers, eight dollars is 10% of 12 dollars. The new way. That don't sound right to me, King Z. The old way was better than that. You see, Kingfish, Amos don't know the new way they figure nowadays, see? Yeah, but the way he got to figure that, we do all the work and he get all the money. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, boys, uh, we as brothers. I'll cut that $8 in half and take six. Well, now, now you were talking, that's more like it. That ain't right, Jess. Uh, you couldn't cut that six in half and take two, could you? Well, uh... As we as brothers, uh, I'll take the two, boys. That's the way I that, figured it. That, that's more like That's it. the way I figured it, yes. I well, I got to get going, because uh, I got to meet up with some of the other members, you know, and uh, tell them about the meeting tonight at the law. Yes. Yeah. Now, you got the directions on the paper there, yeah, so you won't get lost. Uh -huh. Well, see you later. So long, Kingsley. So long, King, King, so, long. so long. See you at the meeting tonight. All right. right. So long, Kingsley. So long. Well, dollars for that job. I believe I'll get me a full rest of What you talking about? Amos, go next door there and ask that sailor shop man how much he charged for a full dress suit. I ain't going to do it. Don't tell me you ain't going to do nothing. I'll pop you one in the mouth. And I'll pop you right back, too. Don't you tell me that. Don't you tell that to me. Don't you tell me you're going to pop. Well, go on, hit me. Hit me one. No, hit me one. Then I can count on that. All right, goodbye. What did they say? They said the band left two hours ago. Left two hours ago? Then why aren't they here? What am I going to do to entertain my guests? What am I going to do for music? Don't worry, dear. They'll be here any minute. Oh, this is really too dreadful. If that band doesn't come soon, Jean's birthday party's room. Where is Jean, anyway? If you want to find Jean, look for Richard. Yes, I've noticed that. 
Do you know they've been together every minute since that boy came here? I have a sneaking suspicion they rather like each other. You have a sneaking suspicion? Uh -huh. I know they do. And so does Ralph. Oh, Richard. Have you seen Jean? No. Not in the last five minutes. I've got to do something to entertain my guests. Mr. Blair, I'd like to ask your advice about something. Why, of course. Sit down. What can I do for you? It's about that property I've been trying to clear. Oh, yes. What seems to be the trouble? Today I learned the deed was never recorded. That's so? But I have an idea. What is it? As you know, Grandfather Williams lived in Harlem many years ago. And that part of New York was considered way uptown. Yes. Well, the house has been vacant ever since Grandfather's death. And I think that the deed may be somewhere in that house. What do you think? Quite possible. So I've decided to go to the old Williams house tomorrow to look for it. Of course, there may be nothing to it. I think it's worth trying, Richard. If I find it. It'll enable me to stay north. I haven't been here long, but I'm beginning to like it. I think I understand. It'll mean an awful lot to me. I understand that, too. And Richard, I think you have a great chance. That's encouraging. You know, there's always a chance in New York for a fright. Affable young man like you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mason, have you seen my sister? Yes, sir. I just saw her going onto the terrace. Thanks. Come in, sir. I just happened to hear over here a conversation between Mr. Blair and Richard. What about? About a piece of paper. A piece of paper? And some subtle inferences regarding Jean. Why don't you speak to Jean about announcing your engagement tonight? I did. She put me off. It's like that Williams boy is cutting in on you. I'll take care of him. How? Oh. He's going to the old Williams house in Harlem tomorrow. Look for that certain piece of paper. What is that? If he finds it, he'll be in a position to marry Jean. Oh, I understand him. He's not going to find it. What's to stop him? I'm going there tonight. But it might be dangerous, though. Mm, don't worry about that, dear. I know someone who'll go with me. He specializes in that kind of work. But when do you intend getting away from here? As soon as the party is in full swing, I'll be on my way. I want you to meet me with the limousine at, uh, well, let's see. We'll make it on. Oh, Ralph, have you a cigarette? Oh, of Hello, darling. My dear, I've never seen you look more charming. Oh, thank you, Ralph. Oh, Jean. What's the trouble, Mother? Oh, darling, that band hasn't come yet. Oh, don't worry. They'll be here soon. They should have been here long ago. Oh, I'll be a wreck on my head. Mrs. Blair, can I get you anything? Yes. Get me a bang. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about the money. I'll take care of the money. You get out there and fix the taxi cab. 
What I mean, it needs a mess of fixing, too. Well, listen, Amos. We got to get this thing fixed and get back to the lodge meeting. Well, I can tell you right now, Andy, I can't fix the thing by myself. Well, Amos, I done wore myself out. Now, I got to sit here and unlatch. Jack, there's only one thing to do. What's that? That's for you to lift up the wheel, and I'll slip the tire on the wheel. Give me that tire. What do you mean, lift it up? Catch hold of the hub, Jack? Catch hold of the thing and lift it up. All right, get ready now. All right, you ready? Yeah. Up. Come on. Move. Put it on there. Well, put it on there, Andy. Well, wait a minute, will you? Hurry up, will you, please? Now, don't rush me. Wait a minute. Well, hurry up and put the thing on there. Well, move your arm. I got my hands on the hubcap. How is I go moving? Hurry up, Andy. Please hurry up. When did the thing is heavy? Listen, Amos. If I don't get a rest pretty soon, I'm going to have a breakdown. Well, put this thing on here, will you? Uncheck. Listen, Andy. I know how to get that thing on there. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell the president how to do nothing. But how? Now, look, you step in the wheel here and lift it up by the hubcap, and I'll show you how to get it on there. Now, step in here. Now, come on, get in there. Now, when I tell you to lift it up, you lift it, and I'll get that wheel on that side. All right. Now, you ready? Yeah. All right, lift it up. Go. Come on, now, lift. I got come on. it. I got hold it. it. Now, hold it. Wait a minute, hold it. Just a minute now. What are you doing? Wait a minute. What are you got... doing? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're breaking my wait, back. Wait, wait, look out, will you? Wait a minute now. I got hurry it. Up, hurry up, hurry up. There it is. Now, there it is. Now, hold it now. Now, pull it. Tuck your head down. I got it. Well, put your head down. I got it. Go ahead. Pull it. Now, wait a minute. Let me get you. Now, hold it. Amos, you're breaking my heart. Now, hold this thing up. Don't let it go. I got it. We almost got it. Pull it. Pull it now. Hurry up. Oh, pull it. Now, just a minute. Hold it. There you will. Let it down. Oh, you'll excuse me, McKinney. Certainly. Have you promised the next dance to anyone? Yes, I promised it to Ralph. Oh. Why? Well, I thought we'd go someplace where we could be alone and sit it out. Well, I'll meet you at the lake, directly after the dance, if you like. If I like? <laughs> Isn't this our dance, Jean? Oh, yes, Ralph. Pardon me. the company, Amos. I just want to tell you... Listen, Andy, why don't you stop telling me every five minutes that you is the president? Let's work together, will you? All right, Amos, all right. From now on, me and you is just the same. I ain't never gonna say that word president no more. <laughs> 
Dance yourself, Andy. Let's work together. The main thing we got to do now is to get this taxi cab back to Harlem. We ain't going to have time enough to change our clothes for the large meeting now. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Amos! Andy! Mr. Richard! Well, I bet doggone Mr. Richard. Mr. Richard, that ain't really you, is it? Well, what in the world are you boys doing up here? Do you work for Mr. Blair? No, sir. We done dripped the band up here from New York. We in business for ourselves. Uh, yeah, sir. We in the taxi cab business in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> That's so. Yeah, That's sir. great. Oh, yeah. I was the president of the company. Amos and Andy. You know, boys... I often wondered what became of you after you left Georgia. Well, Mr. Richard, we certainly do miss that old place, too, you know it. Me and Andy talk about it all the time. Yeah, that was the best home we ever had. Y'all certainly was good to us down there. Your papa treated us just like we were his own children. I was just telling Andy the other day that I can write him a letter next week and, and let him know that we're thinking about it. We sure would love to see him again. Well, Amos, I'm afraid... None of us will ever see Dad again. What do you mean, Mr. Richard? Well, Dad's gone. Gone? You don't mean that? Oh, Mr. Richard, I certainly am sorry to hear that. So was I, Mr. Your dad was the best friend that we ever had. Ever since we worked for him. He raised us, and we loved him. And when we was telling him goodbye, he said to us, he said, Boys, he said, if you ever need anything or anything ever go wrong, remember that you can always write home. And he made us feel like he had a home. And I know that if he didn't have but one loaf of bread, that he would give us half of it. And you say he's gone? Yes. Well, Mr. Richard, if we can ever do anything for you, why, just let us know. Well, thanks, boy. Yes, sir. We are just driving back to Harlem now, Mr. Richard. Yes, sir. Well, seeing you boys again has certainly brought back old times. Yes, sir. It certainly is, then. You know... I just can't believe that you standing there, Mr. Richards. I, I just can't believe you were standing there, you know it. Here's my personal card, Mr. Richard, with my name uh, written on it in pencil there. My regular cards ain't got back from the printer yet. Well, I'll keep this and try and get in touch with you. We certainly would appreciate it, Mr. Richard, if you would get in touch with us. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Boy, I've got to leave you now, but I'll try and see you real soon. All right, Mr. Richard. Yes. Goodbye, Amos. Goodbye, Andy. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Mr. Richard. Goodbye.
You know. A woman's intuition, I suppose. Perhaps your intuition can tell you all the things that I want to say. Perhaps, but I'd much rather hear you say them. Well, if I have any luck at the old Williams house tomorrow. Why wait till tomorrow? There's so much I want to say. I just can't seem to express it. Listen. Do you hear what they're singing? That seems to say it so much better than I can. Domestic night of the sea. 
I hereby call this meeting to order in due form. The secretary will now read the minutes of the last meeting. <clears throat> At the last meeting of the lodge, which was held to collect the dues, there was nobody present. Those are the minutes, brothers, of the last meeting. Do I hear a motion? I make the motion that the minutes be redacted. I second and Thursday. Brother Andy, put the motion. All favor signify by the usual sign the reponents know the eyes of God. There you go. That makes it your animals. Brothers, this special meeting comes once a year in honor of the founder of this great lodge who was lost at sea whilst doing night watch duty. So, brothers, once a year on this night, two of the members has to do night watch duty in the old vacant house. So as to prove that they have the courage of the founder and be worthy of this great organization, the Mystic Knights of the Sea. Brothers, starting this year to pick the members for the night watch, we're going to use the alphabet, running from A to Z. So now I have the list of the members who is to anticipate in the drawing for the night watch this year. The brothers whose names start with the letter A will please come forward when I call the name. Brother Adolf. Brother Al Falco. Brother Abner. Brother Amos and Brother Arthur. And Brother Andy. Numbers will be drawn from the box. And the brother that picks number seven does the night watch duty and chooses another brother to go with him. So the Mac will give me the box. Boy, you now reaches in the box. Brother Arthur, you first. Remember, brother, the one that draws number seven stands the night watch duty. Minute, minute, minute. Number six. Brother Amos, you the next. Number two. Brother Andy, it's your chance. Seven. Many is the time you failed me. If you ever failed me before, fail me now. I got it. Brother Andy has drawn number seven. Amen. Brother Andy, will you step up on the platform? Now choose somebody to go with you. I'll take a police. No, no, one of the brothers. Well, Kingfish, me and Amos is partners, so I'll take Amos. Brother Amos, will you step up on the platform? The rest of you brothers can take your seats. You boys is mighty lucky to have this great honor fall on you. Yeah. Now, here's the instruction. You goes into the old vacant house at midnight tonight. 
and you stay there one hour after midnight. Exactly the same hours that the founder was lost at sea. Well, uh, which house did we go to? Yeah, well, well, which house? The old Williams house. The old, the old Williams, Williams house? house. We, wait a minute, they say that house is haunted. Yes, they say it is, Brother Amos. But they ain't nothing to that. Ain't nothing to that, huh? Of course, it has been said that at a certain hour you would hear a strange moon. But there ain't nothing to that. You may hear a strange speaking on the stand. But there ain't nothing to that. Well, uh, what is this supposed to do when we get there? You have to find a piece of paper that was left there last year by the two brothers. Marked with the words check and double check. And then you leave the piece of paper marked in the same way for the brothers to find next year. Well, uh, uh, what do we do with the paper that we find? You have to bring it back to the lodge to prove that you were there. We put it away in the archive. In the where? In the archive. Oh. Say, King with me and Amos do this night watch tomorrow night, then at night. You see, uh, we got a date tonight with Madam Queen and Ruby Taylor. Boys, this is no reporting. It must be done tonight. Then we gotta tell the gals why we can't meet them. You can't do that. Remember, the night watch is the most important secret of the law. And nobody but the members must know about it. Well, uh, how does we get in this house, Kingfish? Brother Jackson is the caretaker of the old Williams home, and he lets us use it on this case. He escorts you up to the house at midnight and lets you out at one o'clock if you have the paper. Oh, we is locked in, huh? He locks the door when you go in. Boys, you can now sit down. Brothers, I vote that we send these two worthy brothers on their way with our best wishes. Brother Mapple, will you take your place at the altar? And before we dismiss the meeting, we will all sing the Lord's song.
Yes, yes, yes. I'll be back for you at one o'clock. Brother, you stay. Meet up to the first floor. Locked in. We sure will, Amos. Well, let's get going, Amos. Uh -huh. Now, it ain't nothing to be scared of, nothing to worry about. You lead the way, Amos. Go ahead. What is you closing the doors for? That's just in case somebody is following us, that's all. Well, what are we going to do now? We go find that paper. Get going. All right. Take that light out of my face. Put it down here. Very thin. Come on. You got a hammer? Yeah. Did you hear that? Oh, they ain't nothing to that. Maybe that was the window shutter flopping against the house. Sure. He must take it easy. All right. It did sound kind of funny, didn't it? Sure did. Not nothing. Probably a cat. It was the window shade. That's what I thought it was. Hold the light over here. That. Sounds like the wind blowing. Sounds like the wind's upstairs in the house. Oh, let me see it. Oh. Amos, hmm? how long have we been here? Seems like a long time, don't it? and make me worry about you.
Come on, Andy. Amos. What is it? Something's caught up with me. What do you mean? Behind me. I don't see nothing. You're wrong. Don't never do that no more. That ain't nothing but your coat caught in the door. I wish we could find that paper and get out of here. Well, look for it. think that we go Well I be doggone that too. I told you I'd find that paper. Check and double check. Now we gotta leave a piece of paper marked the same way. Yeah. Is you got any paper? I ain't got none with me. Boy, I gotta think of everything, don't I? Well come on, we can find a piece of paper here somewhere. Come on, Andy. Leave us some paper in this here desk. It's all stuff. Well, pull on it, Amos. All right. Get hold there. There's somebody downstairs. Amos, what are you doing? Well, I didn't know the thing was going to fall out there, did I? Here to me, here's a piece of paper. Here, Amos. Here's a piece of paper. We can write on this. Certainly we can. Did you got a pencil? Yeah, here's one. What's that? Sounds like it's coming this way. Come on, Andy, let's get out of here. Get it? 
Don't I always get what I go after? Let me see it. Patient, sister. Patient. Feast your eyes on this. Check and double check. Searched that old house and fell under the roof and found nothing. Why let it leak, Richard? That isn't the last thing in the world. But don't you see? It meant more to me than merely settling in the state. I understand. But why hurry away? Mr. Blair. I love Jean, but I can't expect her to give up everything for me. There might be something I can do. And that's very kind of you, but I couldn't think of it. Come in. What is it, Mason? Pardon me, sir, but Miss Jean is in the living room. She would like to speak with Mr. Richard. Oh, thank you, Mason. Then your mind is definitely made up. Yes, Mr. Blair. Mason, take Mr. Richard's luggage. Well, Richard, I'm sorry to see you go. If I can be of help you at any time, I want you to call on me. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Goodbye. Goodbye, Richard. Before you give up. It's no use. I made a thorough search and it was nowhere to be found. Mr. William, the car is waiting. All right, Mason, I'll be right out. Do you think you might come back again soon? There's nothing I'd like to do more. But as things are, it's rather hopeless. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Richard. Madam, try to explain it to her on the telephone. She hung up the phone. She won't even talk to me. They was all dressed up. Yes. They expected us there. You can't blame them. No. That reminds me, man, that we were supposed to bring that paper from the house to the lodge hall to let them know that we were there. You got it? Yeah, I got it. This paper ain't no good. It ain't. You know what we done done? What we done done now? We done give that check and double check paper to those men back at that house. We you? Well, that means that we're in more trouble now at the large hall. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do, Amos. The gals is mad with us. The kingfish is going to be mad with us. Everything is wrong. 
I was down in the dump, you know where they ended? D E E D. Dead. Oh, it ain't no use to give up. D E E D. Somebody's dead. Remember he was up at the, that house in Hartsdale, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Blair's house? Yeah. We ain't got no reverberan book, is we? No, uh, but call up the operator, ask him for the number. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, I want to talk to Mr. Blair's house in the Hartsdale. Uh, uh, all right, ma'am, I do. What in the world are you doing there, Amos? Uh, she said to hold the line. No, no, don't hold that thing. Go on, talk to her. Let loose of that. Uh, uh, hello? Hello? Well, Mr. Williams is not here. No. No. He left. He's catching the three o'clock train out of the Pennsylvania station. What's that? Well, I don't think you can. It's 2.30 now. All right, sir. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, listen, Andy, the gentleman said that uh, Mr. Mr. Richard is uh, leaving uh, from the Pennsylvania station at 3 o'clock. Oh, he's leaving, huh? Uh, listen, now, Andy, listen. I got an idea that that thing is important. And I tell you what, we got 30 minutes. We can hop in the taxi cab and, and go down to the Pennsylvania station and catch Mr. Williams. Maybe you're right. Well, bring that thing with you. Is that daylight saving time? No, sir. That's railroad time. We better hurry. Thank you. 
We'll drive on in. Track three on the right. Mister, could we see that gentleman down there, please, sir? Sorry, I can't let you through. Well, mister, we got to see Mr. Porton, yeah, please. we got to go down there. I'm sir. sorry, but you're too late. Come on, Andy. Oh, Mr. Richard! Oh, Mr. Richard! Hey, Mr. Richard! Oh, Mr. Richard! Mr. Richard, could I see you just a minute, please, sir? Oh, Mr. Richard, we got something important for you, please. We got to see you. Come up, please, sir. Yes, sir. Tell that red cap to bring my bags out here. Aboard! What's the trouble, boys? Richard, we, we, we found a piece of paper that got your name on and it looked report and we think it belonged to you. Yes, sir, there it is. Well, where did you get this? My boy, this means everything to me. I told Amos that was reporting. Yes, sir. Well, how did you get it? Where did you find it? Well, I tell you, Mr. Richards. I'll explain it to him. All right. You see, uh, Mr. Richards, me and Amos belong to a lodge. Yes. And every year, we have to go out to a house. Yes. To find a piece of paper. when the gal that you love won't speak to you. That's bad. If they would only call up or something. They ain't never going to do that. Oh, it ain't no use, Andy. Well, look here. Yeah, sir, yeah, sir, come in. Thank you, sir. You boy. Thank you, sir, thank you, sir. Much obliged to you. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. What in the world is that, Andy? Well, open it up. Don't stand there looking at it. Open it up. Give me a chance here. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Look at that. Well, what in the world is this? Look here. Uh-uh. What's the matter? Uh-uh. Well, read it. What's the matter? Uh-uh. Well, read the thing, Amos. What is the matter with you? Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Say, here, dear boy, we want you to have a part of our wedding cake. We'll never forget you for the happiness you have brought us. And as soon as we return from our honeymoon, I will get in touch with you. Best wishes, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Williams. Well, I be doggone, Mr. Richard done got married. Hmm. Uh-uh. Ain't that simple. Well, Amos, it looks like everybody is happy but us. Do it, do it, That's a nice-looking cake, ain't it? Yeah, that's pretty, ain't it? Boy, for the first time in my life, I ain't got no appetite. And then I feel the same way, you know. Get away from that phone. You get away from there yourself. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Ruby? What's that? You done heard all about it and you ain't mad with us no more? Well, you still over at Madam Queen's, ain't Let you? Let me talk to Madam. Well, listen, honey, me and Andy be over there right away. We got something pretty for you. Tell us good to eat. It's good to eat. We come right over with it. We bring it right over there, honey. Sure. All right, sweetheart. Oh, you will love it, honey. All right, honey. Goodbye. And they say they don't hear all about it. this thing up. Come on. They ain't mad with them. Everything is all right now, boy. Oh, that sounds good, don't it, Andy? Get away from there. I'll handle this. I'll take this cake over there. Go here. Hello, boys. How is he? Hello, Jackie. Be fine. Hey, boys, I got a big idea. Well, we don't want to Come on, Andy. Just a minute. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You tell the gals that you dropped the cake. I ain't going to do it. Don't you tell the president you ain't going to do nothing. Get in there and tell them gals. Tell them gals. What do you mean?